In the past several videos, we learned about Blue Solution in France, which produced semi-solid batteries for the first time using polymer electrolytes, CATL in China, which announced the production of semi-solid batteries based on organic polymers called condensed batteries at the end of this year, and SDI's all-solid-state batteries in Korea, which announced trial production by using sulfide-based solid electrolytes and adopting anode-less type battery structure in 2026. Today, through a short video, we will look at a startup company called Factorial Energy in the United States, which is frequently appearing in the media these days. This company was founded 10 years ago in 2013. And one of the biggest reasons for its recent attention is an article stating that the company has received over $200 million in investments from companies including Mercedes-Benz and Stellantis. And the recent announcement that it has entered joint development of solid-state batteries with Hyundai Kia Motors. The fact that they have attracted such a large amount of investment and that Hyundai Motor Company has entered joint development with them is, of course, meaningful to pay attention to their technology. If you analyze the structure of the all-solid-state battery used by Factorial Energy through the patents they applied for, it has a structure expressed as an animation you see now. The biggest feature is that the solid electrolyte uses an epoxy-based polymer as a skeleton to maintain mechanical strength. I think most of the people watching this video will have experience using epoxy polymers. It is a substance that is widely used as a strong adhesive and is designed to harden when heated or exposed to ultraviolet rays after mixing two liquid substances. They are using a material with such characteristics as a solid electrolyte by modifying the molecular structure to have lithium-ion conductivity. Therefore, using this method relatively simplifies the process. After mixing the cathode material with the liquid epoxy composition, coating it on the aluminum current collector and curing it by applying heat or irradiating ultraviolet rays, a cathode material layer is formed. For viewers not familiar with the field, I will explain some of the basics and move on. Here are two low molecular weight epoxy adhesive compositions, colored green and yellow. Due to its low molecular weight, it exists in a liquid state. And each substance is stable when stored at a low temperature in a dark place, but the moment the two are mixed, the reaction begins, and the reaction can be accelerated by heat or ultraviolet light. When they react, these molecules connect to form a solid-state polymer with a high molecular weight, as shown in blue. Therefore, when solid-state cathode material particles and liquid-state epoxy composition are mixed, Liquid-state monomers adhere well to the surface of the cathode material and change into solid-state polymers, resulting in much better interfacial adhesion than when solid cathode material particles and solid polymers are mixed. Let's take a look at this process through animation. Here are three particles of cathode material. Mix the cathode material particles with liquid epoxy monomer. Then, the evenly mixed mixture is coated on the aluminum current collector. Monomers in liquid state are evenly coated on the surface of the cathode material. And when heat or ultraviolet rays are applied to the coated mixture, the epoxy is changed into a hard polymer material while maintaining that state. And the epoxy polymer formed in this way plays a role in tightly binding the cathode materials to each other and delivering lithium ions. When the epoxy composition is coated on the cathode material mixture layer formed in this way and cured, a solid separator made of polymer electrolyte is formed. Again, by attaching a copper current collector foil coated with a protective film on top of it and raising the temperature, an anode-free solid-state battery is completed. And if the temperature is further raised in the pressurized state, each interface is bonded and the adhesion between each layer is strengthened. But did you notice one odd thing? Polymer electrolytes generally have less than 1 1,000th of the lithium-ion conductivity of liquid electrolytes. How did they overcome that? Is the battery raised to 60 degrees and driven like the blue solution that first produced a semi-solid battery using a polymer electrolyte? If that's the case, don't you think the car companies couldn't have invested huge sums of money like I said earlier? They used some kind of trick to solve it. A small amount of liquid electrolyte is added as an additive. Judging from the patent, it seems that a liquid electrolyte that accounts for 5 to 10 percent of the polymer electrolyte was injected. If you look closely at the patent displayed on the screen, such a story is hidden. In addition to this patent, all of the patents they have applied for over the past few years contain the same content of adding a liquid electrolyte. 
According to these announcements, the fabricated battery retains 97.3% of its initial capacity even after 675 cycles at room temperature. That's amazing performance. In addition, it is said that the energy density increases by 30 to 50% compared to secondary batteries using existing liquid electrolytes. Compared to all solid state batteries announced by other companies, the energy density is a bit disappointing. The reason is not yet known. About 80 to 90% of the people who have been watching this video so far are I, isn't this a scam? You might be thinking, however, the situation is going back a little too serious to dismiss this as a trick or a scam. In the next video, I want to talk about that unusual situation. Please watch the video by subscribing and setting notifications. That's it for today. Goodbye.